Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark Steiner. I'm a judge back home in Switzerland dealing with public procurement and competition law. I'll speak to you in the next three minutes about sustainability issues within the context of public procurement. So sustainability can mean, for instance, green public procurement, and that's really important in the strategy Europe 2020. They foster especially green public procurement and also eco-innovation as part of the public procurement strategy. A second time or a second aspect of sustainability in public procurement context could be social aspects as, for instance, the ALO call labor standards on child labor or forced labor or fair trade issues. So you can get perhaps extra points when a contract is awarded and coffee because you have a fair trade scheme in place. That would be a social aspect of sustainability in public procurement. So not to this, let's say we should distinguish the green public procurement patterns from considering social aspects in public procurement. These are two possible, let's say, possibilities fostering sustainability in public procurement context. So that would be the first part of the short speak. And the second question would then be, what is the role of the WTO government procurement agreement in this? So remember, the original government procurement agreement 1994 was a rather classical trade agreement, let's say. Despite being uh, of plurilateral nature, it was on market access, competition and money. So a classical liberalization tool. But meanwhile, the revised GPA 2012 is of an entirely different nature. So the new GPA says we are not only considering trade liberalization, but also good governance standards. That's explicit, very explicit when it comes to preventing corruption. 20 years ago, one would have argued that is not within the WTO mission to address corruption in public procurement. Nowadays, this has completely changed. And this is explicitly aim and purpose of the GPA to deal with. So good governance is explicitly endorsed. And the second point is that sustainability is also part of the scheme of the revised GPA. This is also a paradigm change. Explicitly, when it comes to green public procurement, this is endorsed in the rules on technical specification. Environmental features are explicitly allowed. And secondly, when it comes to the award phase, so when you have evaluation criteria or award criteria, environmental characteristics can get you as a bidder extra points to outweigh a higher price and therefore fostering also a competition based on quality and not on price. So this is a game changer too within the revised GPA, so making it clear that there's a different logic compared to the GPA 1994. A second aspect of sustainability within the GPA is the social thing. So the fair trade issue we discussed before considering the Europe 2020 aim and purpose of the whole European Union. So. What is it about social aspects and government procurement agreement? They are not mentioned. Does it mean that they are forbidden? Not at all. Constructive ambiguity is the concept. By not mentioning, they say we have not agreed on everything and that's why we have put the work program in place in order to discuss this uh, more in detail. But it doesn't mean that it's not mentioned social aspect, they are forbidden. There is the concept of constructive ambiguity, saying you can use it as long as your policy scheme is consistent with the basic principle of the GPA as non-discrimination, transparency and stuff like this. So you have to keep the fundamental rules 
but there is policy space to include social aspects, because if not, the European Union directives would be illegal from a GPA perspective because the EU directives allow fair trade issue as award criteria. So the argument would be then that the concept of the government procurement agreement has evolved compared to the scheme of the 90s. Thank you for your kind attention.